She's been a strong advocate for senior services, and she joins me now to talk a little bit about her initiative. We have Lieutenant Governor Yvonne pretner Solon. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure, Julie. So, Lieutenant Governor, let's begin with something you established calling the Senior Linkage Line. Let's talk a little bit about the services it provides for seniors. Yeah, actually, it's not the Senior Linkage Line that I created, but I expanded it to include the one-stop shop for seniors. And, Thank you for uh, the clarification. Yes, it, the Senior Linkage Line is a, is a federal line that was established to help people choose Medicare products for, um, and uh, it's been in place for a long time and it, it's a great group of people who are trained to speak to the public and what we did was to expand that and to improve the line so that there, it's, it's quicker, so that somebody stays on the line with somebody so they're not left on hold. Um, and, and they're not um, transferred from one party to another. So it was the idea of brushing up the service and also a way to keep seniors connected. And this is my whole goal. It, my, my goal is to keep seniors engaged. And why? Why, why is that? Why? We have a growing population of seniors. The growth of seniors will, ex will increase so large that it outpaces the um, growth in the population of youth, which has traditionally been our fastest growing population. Um, and um, we have seniors that are leaving the workforce, it's leaving a, a hole in our workforce and, and the people that are coming up behind. Seniors have not been a population that we have valued really as uh, Americans, not like they have in other cultures, like um, in uh, Eastern cultures, in Asian cultures, and, um, and Native American cultures. And so what I wanted to do was to profile seniors, recognizing that they are a wealth of information, a, a wealth of experience, um, that they have a, still a lot to offer, and by keeping seniors engaged, and by continuing to value them, we also help to maintain their health. Because as long as they're engaged, then they're going to be taking better care of themselves, and they're going to be more concerned about staying active. Have you found it challenging to try to reach this particular demographic? No, they're very responsive and they love it. They love it. I think that they're hungry to just be included and involved. And I think that, I mean, I speak of my own population as a senior, that um, we recognize that we still have a lot to, to, to offer. People are living longer, and so we want people, while they're living longer, to live healthier and to have a better quality of life to remain more viable. And so with the expansion of the Senior Linkage Line, have you found that it's um, grown exponentially in the number of calls it receives, the information it gives, and what are some of the real, the key issues that concern seniors right now? Well, people call about, first of all, it's a three-phase line. So the first thing was to connect people with government services. The second phase was to connect um, seniors with um, volunteer opportunities, whether they want to volunteer in the community or whether they might need somebody to help them with some services around their home or, or um, to provide some personal care for them. And then the third area was to help seniors stay connected with the employment opportunities. And it's people over the age of 50 who've had the hardest time weathering this most recent recession and staying employed. And we do find that because seniors are living longer, they want to stay employed longer, maybe not in the same career that they had their whole life, but they want to stay active and involved in earning some extra income because they have longer years to, many more years to support themselves. Speaking of income, you also are a proponent of and trying to educate younger people about planning for retirement. Now, according to a recent Gallup poll, 90% of Americans don't have enough saved for retirement. 45% have nothing saved at all. How important do you think it is for people to save for retirement? Well, for retirement and for, and for their long-term care, we do know that 70% of the people over the age of 65 will at some time in their life require some long-term care services. And those services can be very costly, whether it's in-home services or in some type of a facility, whether it's hospital or nursing home or some type of assisted living facility. Um, we also know that people have to start making plans for modifications to their homes if they decide they want to stay in their homes, whether it's um, just identifying that they can have 
a bedroom, a, a kitchen, and a bathroom all on the same floor. Um, or finding some means of being able, uh, ramps or something to help them negotiate stairs as they get older. Um, people who, um, as people age, we want them to have, to appreciate and, uh, and enjoy a quality of life that um, is what they expect. And uh, what we find is that many people have not thought about aging and about long-term care. And when you ask them about you know, what will happen if they get ill as they get older, people say, I don't know, or they say, the state will take care of me, or, or whatever. But what we do know is because, as I said, the senior population is growing exponentially, that um, the, the state can no longer afford to take care of everybody that it becomes unsustainable and will bankrupt the state unless people start planning for their own aging. And so the message might resonate with a considerable portion of the population. However, with so many people concerned about the economy, median incomes have gone down every year for the last five years. With so many families living paycheck to paycheck, how do you take this goal and make it achievable for those people? Um, well, again, a three-phase process. <laughs> the first phase is educating people to start planning at an earlier age because the earlier you start planning for your later years the less you have to the less costly it is on a on a regular basis if you wait until you're already in retirement it will be more costly for you to plan for your later years so we want to be we want people thinking about it and we want people talking about it we want people talking with family members and and uh, and because it's something that we just avoid. Um, we also, the second phase of our, of our plan is to look at products and to identify products that are more affordable and products that are reliable, that uh, protect the consumer, that, so that if they make an investment in a product that it will be available for them when they need it as, as they age. And um, we've had a, a subgroup that has been working on this for the past year, and they've identified about 14 different types of products, uh, a variety of things from long-term care insurance to personal savings to um, uh, Medigap policies to um, um, reverse mortgages and some many new, more convertible types of, of um, products that can serve a variety of different um, functions depending on whether a person needs long-term care or retirement income or, or maybe to leave for their heirs after they pass on. And so if people have questions, can they call the Senior Linkage Line to get information on, on some of these products that you just talk, talk, talked on about? On these or? products, not yet. Okay. No, and, um, and there is a, a website for the one, um, for Own Your Future, and so they should go to the Minnesota Own Your Future website. We'll provide that information. So, Madam Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much for joining us today. We certainly appreciate your time, as always. Okay. Thank you, Julie.